Welcome to this video on social water productivity. In this video, I will introduce you to the concept, I will provide examples and cover data requirements. But above all, I hope that you develop a critical attitude towards the benefits that are precisely served by water in a society, and that you begin to see that social water productivity is a concept that's helpful to analyze this. First, a starter on the difference between social and economic benefits. Social and economic benefits of water are not the same, except maybe in an ideal capitalist society. What the value of water is depends, of course, on the societal objectives. It is not always an economic argument that explains it all. Look at the picture. Water may be used to grow low economic crops, like rice in the Mekong Delta just because society wants so. Under social water productivity, we look at the benefits of water for society as a whole, whereas under economic water productivity, you have focused on the private benefits of one farmer of water being used. What is then the concept of social water productivity? Social water productivity is defined as the net social benefits per unit of water consumed. What are these social benefits? It are the benefits that the society, or actually some actors in society, value as most important. These benefits may range from food security to poverty alleviation, economic growth, equitable use of water, or environmental conservation. Valuing water or what is the value and how to best use the water is of an inherent political nature. Society or some key actors decide what the most important value of water is and for which benefits water should be used. Let us look at three examples which provide different answers to the main social benefits of water. In Andalusia, in Spain, there is an example of jobs as main benefit versus culture. Water is used to generate jobs, where more jobs are generated per drop of water in greenhouses, followed by strawberry farms, olive orchards and rice fields. The cultural value of paella rice seems to be dropping, as rice production in Spain is decreasing year by year. So society decided that economic jobs are more important than cultural heritage. Another example is Ica in Peru. It is an example of water for the poor. But for which poor precisely? A water transfer project was implemented to bring more water to the poor in the plains. Yet this water was taken from smallholder highland farmers who obtained more dollars per drop of water than the poor workers who benefit from the water transfer project. So society decided that it was more important to bring water to the poor in the plains than to those in the highlands. A third example is the, central, is the Aral Sea in Central Asia. It is an example of agricultural benefits versus environmental benefits. The Aral Sea shrinks and dries up since the 1960s, largely due to increased water consumption for agriculture. So society decided here that the main social benefit of water is agricultural production and not water for conservation of species and habitats of the Aral Sea. In the online text, you can read more about these very different cases. So, yes, there are many different benefits, and analysis of social water productivity dive into the main benefits and for whom they are important. It is in your social water productivity analysis thus very, very important to specify which benefits and for whom the benefits are obtained. Is it about employment, for instance, as we saw in Andalusia in Spain? Or is it about environmental justice, like in Peru, whether investments are truly benefiting the poor? 
or it can also be about food security, that that is your prime interest. Then you could look at the nutritional value of crops produced. Generally, conflicts over water are a very clear indicator that within society there is no clear agreement how water should be valued and used. For instance, like the picture shows the bread riots in Egypt in 2007 and 2008, are they a sign that there is too little water for cereal production in, in Egyptian society? Now you know that social water productivity may cover many diverse social benefits. How should you then be analyzing all these benefits? I have two tips for you. One is a careful scoping on what sort of social water productivity is analyzed, and meaning what kind of benefits are you analyzing, and make very clear, this is the second tip, make very clear in your evaluation which benefits of water are most important in society, and which benefits are deemed less important. I think that you now begin to see in this video the contrast between social and economic water productivity. Whereas economic water productivity is a fairly straightforward concept, social water productivity has many dimensions and interpretations. Now, having said that, what kind of data would you need to analyze social water productivity? Ah yes, and here you see one more time all the different benefits that uh, water can serve and that are therefore important in social water productivity. Uh, food security, jobs, income, equity and environment. So there are many social benefits at play when we look into water and evapotranspiration. Having determined the scope of your water productivity analysis, you typically gather data through a household survey. For instance, you look at the jobs generated per crop or the conflicts over water or the willingness to pay. You can organize focus group discussions where groups of people rank different social benefits of water and they position maybe different values of water on a map. You could analyze policy documents, hold held interviews on the main priorities for water use. Is it water for food? water for environment, or water for economic growth. And you need to obtain data on evapotranspiration, so the water consumed, the ETA of and the actual evapotranspiration of crops and other agricultural systems. In your analysis, you then combine different data sources to come to an evaluation which benefits are most important to society and which benefits are valued less. Does this all sound easy to you? Well, for me not. And therefore, I would like to end this video with a call for nuance. Throughout this video, you have seen examples how social water productivity is very much the outcome of a decision-making process in society. A decision-making process which is deeply political. Some key actors in society usually determine what the prime benefit is for which water is used. This is not to say that this is a transparent, equal decision-making process. On the contrary, it is probably dirty politics. So, furthermore, it is not only that there is one social water productivity value. It changes. It changes over time, from water abundant to water stressed situation. It changes in a watershed, from upstream to downstream regions. It may change in society from rich to poor people, and it may change within a community. Farmer A may pursue very different benefits with water than farmer B. So taking these two aspects into account, as so one that key actors usually decide what the main benefit of water is, and secondly that water productivity values have a dynamic nature, I would like to end this video with the metaphor of water social, of with the metaphor of social water productivity representing a mosaic of values for water, which fluctuate over time and across different spatial and social scales.
Did I spark your interest? And are you now intrigued to think a bit more about social water productivity? Then read the online text and make the assignment where you can reflect on water benefits in a region you know very well. Good luck!